What is psychological change? What is change in this mind-body unit? I can change my body, I can change my muscles, my heart, my lungs, even my genes and my chromosomes. But what about my psyche? Is my belief in free will a reality or is it an illusion? Pantare, everything flows, everything changes. These are the words of the Greek philosopher Heraclitus from the 5th century BC. Heraclitus says, one cannot enter the same river twice. The river is ever-changing and we are ever-changing as well. The scope of disintegration tries to address this point exactly. How do we change as individuals and as a collective? How does our environment change? What's the relationship between the two? And how can we enhance the way we are touching and changing areas that at times are beyond our reach? Now, these changes are happening, whether we like it or not. This continuous flux, this pantheray reality is happening all the time. The question is to what extent we succeed in touching them, in holding the reins of our lives stories, in rooting our lives to directions that are favorable to us as individuals and as a collective. When we talk about change, we live in an era where we are meant to think that everything is possible for us. We have free will, we have free choice, we are the masters of our domain. But if we take a close and deep look, we find places that are very, very hard to change. In psychology, an example of that is called repetition compulsion. Sigmund Freud writes in the early 19th century, that we have behaviors and thoughts that are repeating themselves in our lives. Some of them we would really like to get rid of, but still we are not succeeding in doing that. Again and again we have the same disturbing thoughts, maybe dysphoric thoughts, again and again we behave in the same way in relationships with people, although we would like to be different, and yet and still they repeat themselves. Why do we have this repetition in our lives? It's almost deterministic. This and this will never happen to me. This and this always happen to, happens to me. So this conflict of free will versus determinism is really rooted, I believe, in every one of us as a conflict. So when we talk of change, I think that we are talking about the possibility of changing those places that at times we have an inner voice inside our head like sitting on our shoulders saying well this will never be touched this is with us to stay here forever we can add to that that not only as individuals but also as a collective there's a lot of determinism going on many if not all of our politicians of our uh, economists many of our advertisement people our uh, philosophers many of them also believe in different kinds of deterministic views of life that which has been is going to be and they take very important decisions with economy and politics and world affairs i believe that almost every time that the g8 or the g20 the leaders of the world are meeting they say well things are going in a certain course let's keep them in that course this is the right course we are maintaining our power our wealth our place in society and it's very good for us and it can continue in the same manner. This is also deterministic in some ways and not always beneficial. So we have this conflict of determinism versus free will in the world and in ourselves. Now let's focus on the concept of change within ourselves. I said in the second lecture, what is integration, that I will be talking about different areas of integration. And the first one was our body, 
ourselves, everything that is happening within the boundaries of our skin. So let's focus here for a minute. We are an amazing apparatus of a mind and a body together. We are not to decide now where the body begins and ends and where the mind and the soul begins and ends, but they are connected together and when we talk about change, we are talking about changes in our body and about changes in our mind. Today I would like to focus on changes in the body because they are much uh, more apparent to us. It's easier for us to see changes in the body. And in the next conversation, we'll talk about changes in the mind. So, changes in the body. We are born with a certain genetic code. Half of the genome of our mother, half of the genome of our father, combined together in some amazing randomality, and our unique genetic code comes into existence. Now, this genetic code restricts us in many ways. We have a certain color of eyes, of skin, of hair, our bodily systems, all our bodily systems, our regulatory systems, our constitution, our temperament, many, many things are decided and predetermined in birth. But we are seeing throughout our lives that actually all of these aspects are ranges of possibilities, ranges of probabilities for us. If we live different, the environment we are meeting, the decisions we are taking, the life we are living is changing the way we are evolving, is changing the way that this certain genetic biological reality is coming into existence. So actually in every moment of time we have an infinite number of possibilities for us. It, maybe it's a small infinite because not everything is possible, but still it is infinite. I can give you an example. Let's say 100 people are meeting some very stressful event in their lives. Only a number of them will react with post-traumatic stress disorder symptoms. Others will not. And even the ones who will react in that way, if this stressful occurrence were to happen at the different stage in their lives, they might not have reacted in that way. So every moment in time is very unique and singular in the possibilities that lie in it. I remember the first course in my psychological studies. First day, first chapter, it was called Nature versus Nurture. Meaning, nature, our biology, our genetic code, nurture the environment we are meeting, the care we were given by our parents and all of the environment around us and the way it changes us. Now, much is predetermined, but many, many researches show how much is possible in the development of us. Now, think of yourself, let's say we'll change our lifestyle today. Start to work out in some very healthy uh, activity. After a few months, our body will be different. Our muscle system will be different, our lungs, our heart. And if we were to take a look at our nervous system, our brains and other areas, we, were to see, we, we will see differences. Today we do fMRIs, we can really check the brains before and after different changes in our lives. And we are seeing changes in our body and in our nervous system. So it's quite amazing that we can observe in this resolution today our body and see the changes that are happening. An even more exciting area is a new area of research, maybe 10 years old, called epigenetics. We see today that our genes actually are evolving through our lifetimes. The word scientists are using is that genes and chromosomes are expressing themselves in different ways. Now, this change in the gene is inherited by us to our children. So the building blocks of our lives are changing through our lifetime, in ourselves, and in our children, and also in everybody around us, because if we live a happy life, everybody around us live a happier life, and their genes are changing as well. But really, to, to, to imagine 
a change in the core, in the root, in the most fundamental place in our biology is really amazing. Now this is a new field of research. I believe that in the future, like fMRI that is looking into our nervous system, we'll be able to see how certain activities, certain life occurrences are changing our genetics in a certain way. That's like science fiction, unimaginable science reality almost. So. This is another very fundamental place where we see that change can happen within our biology. Now let's go back to our psychology. We see changes happening in every aspect of our biology, yet in our psychology it's much more difficult to bring change in some places that are very fixed, very restricting, very harsh, very judgmental, some areas that are really out of bound for us, out of our reach. These are exactly the places that we'll be addressing in the next conversation. So that's it for today. Feel free to comment down there. Make sure you subscribe. Share this with someone who might be interested. Let's try to turn this into a dialogue of an ever-changing flux of ideas. See you next time.